Hi folks, today's video is something a little bit different, no technology, it's about a bike trip my wife and I took a couple of years ago out to a place called The Hell, which was a pretty epic journey, it was one of, it was part of a five day journey through the Karoo region of South Africa or around the Karoo region in South Africa. Uh, pretty dry conditions, but we went through hell actually getting out of this place. So I thought, you know, this could be quite an interesting video. And just to give people an idea of what it was, the conditions were like getting out and why possibly they call it the hell. Um, to us, certainly the hell was really the part getting out. And I think that'll become very apparent when you watch the latter part of the video. Uh, this map just gives an idea of the area we covered each day ride was covered in a different color. We started off at Cape Town on the far left and went around the bottom part there on the N2 along the Hrabo through Rufius on the N, Swellendam, Barrydale. Um, you, many of you will know that is Route 66 where Ronnie's sex shop is. Through to Ladysmith where we spent the first night and then the next part of the trip was from there on through Oudsuren and onto the Swartberg Pass and on the far right that blue icon there you'll see where the hell is actually marked it's basically a turn off from from the Swartberg pass just left of prince albert and you go down through a very very steep valley uh, with a lot of switchbacks in the road very very narrow single lane traffic only and and really slippery on the way out but uh, that's that's really it the rest of the trip was up through sutherland which is the observatory and lanesburg tiles river and then back to cape town along the n1 this clip just gives a feeling for what the Swartberg Pass looks like. It's a beautiful gravel pass just outside of Oetzeren. And this road is actually still reasonably okay to drive on uh, without any problems. But you'll see now from this clip, this is the sort of the, just at the top of the pass before it descends down into the hill. You'll see this is the type of very narrow road you're sitting with with sheer drops down the side. And this is a view from the top looking down towards the Khamkaskloof Valley with the hell at the bottom over there. And you'll see very sharp switchbacks, uh, blind turns basically. And once you've descended to the valley floor, this is really the sign that you're going to see welcoming you as you arrive. There is self-catering cottages and this is part of the Swartbach Nature Reserve. Cape Nature is actually administering the area and you can rent out these self-catering cottages, uh, historic cottages actually from them at really, really reasonable rates. They've got sort of solar power and gas as there's not really electricity there and they have got a single telephone line that runs in and out. And in fact, when we arrived, there was a problem. The phone line was down. So they actually asked us when we left, you know, if we could just look along the road as we're going out and if we can see the telephone lines fallen down, can we just tie it back together again and um, so they can get communications. So this is the house we actually stayed in, Stapis Kordir uh, house. And the house itself dates back only thanks to 1950 or so. It's all been fully restored. But this is a type of houses you can expect to stay in. And outside the old houses, they've also got these information boards that give you a little bit of more information about the valley and the specific house and who was living there. I don't think any of the original inhabitants actually remain in the area anymore. They've actually all moved out. So this is still the pleasurable part of the trip. And look how nice and clean the bike was after two days of riding and along gravel roads. Um, little did we know, the next day was just not to be the same. It was a completely different day. We did still manage to have a bit of time after our arrival to walk around and we found quite a lot of these old vehicles and things scattered around in different places around the valley. It's obviously too expensive and difficult just to remove wrecks and take them away. So I mean there's all sorts of interesting vehicles, cars, old agricultural and farming implements um, and so on. There's not very much mechanization down here. Um, you know, it was pretty well much horse-drawn and sort of human-powered equipment, really. So next morning, it had rained overnight, and you can see us preparing to leave here. And uh, 
my wife is standing here just looking up at the mountain thinking what on earth is ahead of us you know and we had no idea yet how bad it was going to be getting out of the hell and this is now where it let it really started living up to its to its reputation i think um this part was still not so bad and the the 17 minutes or so following was our struggle including one fall i had just getting up the ascent of the mountain pass but little did we know that further along that road it was like clay wet clay which you could hardly even walk on so uh, yeah worst times were ahead but here we go light that you see winking on my dashboard is the ABS brake system that's been disabled uh, for off-road riding and I also deflect the tires and so on but these little rocks especially these re mid-sized rocks you see in the road those are actually all incredibly slippery and you've really got to avoid them otherwise you know you end up slipping and falling like soon and look at the drops on the right hand side you can see going off the edge here or if you meet a car coming the other way if it doesn't stop you know you you down the mountain why the bike stalled here partly is also because I'm trying to keep the revs very low um, if you travel in too low a gear and you move the throttle too much the problem you, you run that risk of the rear tire spinning out very very quickly so hence why you know it was trying to use low torque and low revs and unfortunately it just stalled here right on this completely blind and slippery bend with these rocks so this is only one fall of many, many ones that were still to come on the straight flat road at the top, the clay road. And this stuff all moved more slippery, so yeah. if you're going to ride up here on those slippery rocks, I don't know what you're going to do here. Do you want to walk ahead a bit? I think so. Okay. <laughs> Although we're out of sight of each other, we can communicate through our helmet intercoms up to a distance of about nearly 800 meters. So that's why my wife could actually run ahead to some of the corners and then give me directions from there.
Also with the uh, fully loaded bike, I had the two panniers and the top box fully all fully loaded. It is easier for me to control the bike still, obviously if I have only one person up with a pillion passenger on, it's a little bit more difficult if you need to sort of throw the bike left or right or accelerate quickly or do anything. So hence why also, you know, my wife getting off was a lot safer on those on those very, very tight bends. So there we go, dangerous part was done and all that now lay ahead was a super slippery wet clay road and of course a stream that became a river which we now had to find a way across as well. This is what I need to try cross now. And then up the other side there. So here I go, coming from the far end. We had already walked across here to test the depth and look for rocks and see what I had to avoid. It's not so much the depth of the river here that was the issue or possibly the flow did interfere slightly but the biggest worry is you can't see where the big boulders lie and obviously right near the end what you're going to see is that's what happened i did hit a big boulder i didn't see it so clearly and i nearly nearly dropped the bike go to your right put your feet out stay on your right you're on the right path and you must swerve it like a round round shape Stay on your right. Keep your feet down. Stay on your right. Keep your feet down. It's okay. Do you need help? Oh God. Okay. Okay.
something burning, but we didn't fall. Oh, I believe you're awake now. Okay, good. I'm glad you didn't pee in your pants. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Okay, it's okay. We survived. Good, we did a good job. Mm. And then after a couple of countless falls along that really slippery clay road, we actually managed to get out in one piece. And this is sort of what the bike looked like. This is just emerging out of the other end of the Swartberg Pass. The pass itself obviously a lot better condition and wider and, and a lot easier to drive. The joke was when we got to the end, look what we found. The pass had actually been closed to traffic due to the rain and the conditions and so on. So yeah, we would have probably encountered that if we'd come in today, you know, this particular day, but uh, little did we know that. All I can say is, look, it's a beautiful ride. It's actually lovely in if the weather's clear, but if there's any sign of rain, it's not a place you want to go in really by bike or by car it's an incredibly slippery and dangerous road and i certainly wouldn't recommend it but like i said sunny it's a great place to visit and a, a nice stay as well when all in all we enjoyed it you know this has made it i suppose very memorable anyway that's all folks so hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in my next video